What's up gamers, it's your boy, Lil Head Cold. Yeah, I'm feeling a bit under the weather. Post edit, I just wanted to put this out there. I feel like I sound really nasally throughout the narration, but that is the reason. Hopefully we are on the starlight road to recovery. I often wonder, what truly makes a card broken? And while there's the usual suspects encompassing unbalanced card design, I believe there's an aspect to a card that is often overlooked, and that is the card type itself. Well, today we're entering the laboratory of Dr. Kozaki, and we'll be conducting a bit of an experiment. And our test subject is Christron Halki Fibrax, a card that stands to prove that God does in fact make mistakes. Would Christron Halki Fibrax still be broken if it were any card type other than a Link? For the uninformed, Christron Halki Fibrax is a currently banned card. A Link 2 monster, bottom left and right arrows, water, machine type, 1500 attack, with the following effect. Requiring two monsters for its Link Summon, one of which must be a tuner, and if this card is Link Summoned, you can special summon a level 3 or lower tuner from your hand or deck in defense position, but it cannot activate its effects this turn. And during your opponent's main or battle phase as a quick effect, you can banish this card you control, special summon one tuner synchro monster from your extra deck and this is treated as a Synchro Summon, and both of these effects are hard once per turn. Christron Halki Fibrax is widely regarded as one of the most powerful and unbalanced cards in the game's recent history, but is it the amalgamation of each effect in one package that creates an overarching theme of giving everyone a genuinely bad time. Starting at the beginning, we've got about as generic a summoning requirement without just saying two monsters, and it can't be disregarded that a large portion, really all, of the most widely used hand traps are tuners. Somehow, no one in the boardroom called that one into question. And furthering on that, Synchros in the most recent tournament showings have been among the most powerful extra deck monsters at a player's disposal. Free my dog, Savage Dragon. I'm not saying he didn't do anything wrong. I would just like him back because my table 500 decks are really suffering. Basically, you don't often find yourself lacking a tuner unless you're playing the wrong game. Next, summoning a level 3 tuner from your hand or deck seems pretty baseline. Have we seen examples of this effect replicated, be that word for word or similar in function? Yes, but wow, do they actually lack in comparison to the point that is laughable. Arrive in Light, a continuous spell, allows you to special summon a tuner from hand, but when a synchro monster is summoned from the extra deck. Jirak Meteor is a level 10 synchro monster that blows up the entire field on its summon. That sounds fantastic until you realize that this card is locked into Jirax, a subpar dinosaur archetype. And if you had the field presence to drop a level 10 synchro in this deck, there were probably 10 better options for the same level. Reject Reborn is a trap card that lets you retrieve a synchro and a tuner from your graveyard while also ending your opponent's battle phase in response to a direct attack. Attack. It's not absolutely terrible, but requires a fair amount of setup and requires you to be very much in a losing state against your opponent. But it's definitely an anime protagonist comeback card if I've ever seen one. And I hate to feed you your vegetables, but you're not the main character. And the only thing your plot armor is doing is getting you stopped by TSA. Salvage Warrior, a level 5 monster, lets you retrieve a tuner from the graveyard after it's successfully tribute summoned. Well, that's awful. Synchro World is a field spell that, in layman's terms, allows you to retrieve a tuner from the graveyard after performing four successful Synchro Summons. Clearly inspired by my ex-wife with this level of gaslighting for an MST. Tuner Capture is a trap card that, in response to your opponent's Synchro Summon, allows you to summon a tuner monster from their graveyard that was used for that Synchro Summon. It's interesting, but interesting in terms of Yu-Gi-Oh card effects might as well be a synonym for bad. And finally, Yoko Tuner, a level 1 tuner monster which upon normal summon, if you don't miss the timing, allows you to special summon a tuner from your hand or graveyard. Yoko Tuner is really the closest approximation of Christron Halki Fibrax's first effect, but overall, none of these cards do what Halki Fibrax is able to do. They have a clear path to the goal, but decided to throw red shells at themselves by any means possible. What about the free summon of a Synchro Tuner? We have even fewer examples of this effect replicated in other cards. Synchro World makes a second appearance, and this time, it's even worse. You can retrieve a Synchro from your graveyard after successfully Synchro Summoning five times. Limit Overdrive is a quick play spell that basically allows you to contact fuse a Synchro monster, but you specifically have to use a Synchro and a Synchro Tuner. So, I get that this allows you to potentially interrupt an opponent's playline, 
However, I have some more questions. What game state allowed you to end with the required materials on your field and this card face down to surprise your opponent, but didn't allow you to just go into the synchro monster that you'd summon by using this card? Also, why, 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 why? They say the perfect counter to Spellbinding Circle doesn't exist. Ladies and gentlemen, Exhibit A. Synchro Change is a normal spell card that lets you swap a Synchro on your field with one in your extra deck with matching levels, but the original Synchro on the field is banished. Synchro Transcend is a quick play spell card that lets you cheat out a Synchro from your extra deck that is one level higher than a Synchro monster your opponent controls. I want to say that this is good, and even though we've established that Synchros are a powerful mainstay in most extra decks, relying on your opponent controlling one to make this card live, as well as the necessity of constructing your extra deck around this card, having a target at any point in a duel is a cacophony of bad deck design, but also bad card design. However, this is our closest example to Halki Fibrax's second effect, a one-for-one -one advantage neutral trade for a free synchro monster. Really, no card fully emulates what Halki Fibrax can do with any comparable potential, so I'm confident in saying that we could make Crystron Halki Fibrax exponentially worse perhaps even fair for tournament play if it were anything but a Link monster. A Fusion, Synchro, or Xyz version of Crystron Halki Fibrax. It's not relevant to the argument, but this is a great example of why cards are aesthetically pleasing as certain card types. These just look strange. And with these examples, we're not changing any of the effects, but we do have to alter some of the summoning conditions. Starting with Xyz, I've decided that Crystron Halki Fibrax would be best suited as a rank 4 Xyz monster. We don't want to make it unplayable. So our Xyz version will require two level 4 monsters, one of which still needs to be a tuner. The idea of an Xyz monster requiring a tuner, then having two means of summoning tuners, feels like it should be illegal. I'm calling the police. A synchro version of Crystron Halki Fibrax, basically what it should have been to begin with, raises the question of what level it could be that still allows it to be a powerful tool in the extra deck. Taking into account synchrons and similar synchro spam engines, I've decided that level 4 or level 5 is probably the best way to go. And I also wonder if a synchro version would be made a tuner. This would probably be the best comparison for efficacy to the original Halki Fibrax, where we can still maintain the most generic material requirements. And finally, Fusions. The level is almost completely irrelevant in this example. It could be level 13 and a half and not change anything. However, I strongly urge to stay away from level 5 or else Instant Fusion is going to find itself in the crosshairs of the ban list. We still have the privilege of generic materials, but we're adding a layer of complexity with now needing a fusion spell. A fusion version would have access to support by means of power bond as well as cybernetic fusion support. So we don't have to rely solely on polymerization, which is a plus. A fusion version would take my vote for how I'd want to see Halki Fibrax reincorporated into the game. So, with just these examples, I believe it does make a case to say that a monster's power level can be drastically worsened, or at the very least better balanced, just by changing the border color. And I have no doubt that Crystron Halki Fibrax is just one of several examples that we could run this experiment on. And that's where you all come in. Do you have a card, whether it's on the ban list or not, that you think could be altered entirely by changing its card type? Drop a comment down below, let me know your thoughts. And that'll wrap up today's discussion guys. If you liked the video, don't forget to drop a big thumbs up, it's greatly appreciated as always. And until next time, this has been Purple Pineapple TV, signing off.